What's new about the new Tesla Model 3 performance? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you by talking you through all the key changes, as well as seeing just how quick it is by testing its performance and seeing if you can be a hooligan in the car. Now, this thing, it's a bit odd, you see, because Tesla constantly update their cars. They're not like normal manufacturers when they release a new one each year. And it's sometimes really hard to keep up with all the different mutations. In that way, the Tesla Model 3 is a bit like coronavirus. <laughs> so I better stay at least two meters away from it. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the price. So the entry level Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus, which is rear drive only, kicks off at £43,500. Though you get a three grand government grant for EV vehicles to go against that price. So around 40 grand. However, this Model 3 performance is £57,000. And because it's over 50 grand, you don't then get the three grand off from the government. It's a bit mean, isn't it? <laughs> So maybe you want a litre on these cars, you can do that through CarWow, look, so you can get the entry level one for £404 a month, and the Model 3 performance is £568 per month. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, or actually just follow the link below the video if you'd rather do that, you can go to CarWow to check out the latest EV car deals. Now, if you want to do that at a later date, you can just simply Google, help me CarWow, my team and I will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. Now let me talk you through the changes that Tesla's made to the Model 3's design. So here at the back, they've done, they've done nothing. They've done nothing at all. It's the same as before, so it's pretty nice looking from the back. And this being the performance model, you have a carbon fiber boot lip spoiler, yay. Here at the side, they have done very little actually, but you now have black where there was chrome, such as around the windows and on the door handles. Other than that, looks like the Tesla Model 3 has always looked from the side. Quite a nice side profile, to be fair. What they have changed, though, the wheels. You get new wheel designs across the range. They started at 18s, rising to these 20s on this performance model. They're called Uber turbines. Uber, it's a bit German, isn't it? Now, here at the front, you get some new headlights. Apparently, they're Matrix LEDs, but more on that later. Oh, look, we've got the little green flash there to show it's an electric car. Yay. New rules, looks rubbish. It's still the same Model 3 front though, so it looks a bit like a, a fish. That's your changes really, not many. Let's have a look inside, see what they've done in there. The big news in here is this. Whole new center console. The old one had a gloss black finish and it'd scratch easy. Also the cubbies were a bit fiddly. Whereas now it's all very good. Look at this, nice and slidey. And you can see there's two USB-Cs now, not normal USBs. It fit three big bottles in there, look. That's how big it is in that cubby hole. Underneath here you have even more storage in a 12 volt socket if you're that way inclined. Then a couple of cup holders here. Well, they are a bit large, so when you accelerate, things do rattle around. My favourite update is this, though, where you put your mobile phones. You've got a soft pad there, and you just whack your mobile phone in there, and it does stay there, even when you're going quickly, and it charges it wirelessly. That's good. So what's also good? Quality. It's all right. Tesla's used to have pretty poor quality, but the materials all feel soft and squidgy, even down here, down here. Speaking of down here... Even more practicality. Decent size door bins. What's not so good though is getting to the glove box. You have to press a button here, then press that button there to undo it. Why well, can't I just open it by pressing a button on the glove box? But at least it is a big old glove box and it's on with felt, so things don't rattle around in there. Other updates we have are the buttons on the steering wheel. They used to be plastic, feel a bit cheap. Now they're metal, so they feel more expensive. Though, this is one of the problems I have with the Tesla. You have to control everything through the screen. So let's say I want to move the steering wheel. I don't use an electric button here. I have to press this button here, get a menu up on the big screen, and then, where is it? There we go, steering wheel. And now I can move the steering wheel in and out using that button. And there is plenty of adjustment actually in the steering wheel. Now I want to do the mirrors. Okay, right, I press this button now on the screen. Now I'm going to move the right mirror, so I press that button. And now this is controlling the right mirror. Bit of a faff. 
if you own this car, you're going to set it up for yourself and it'll remember who you are. And so it'll preset to how you like to have it set up. However, if you're like me and you're often parking on the curbside, you are going to want to sometimes change the angle of the mirror and not always have it tilted down the same. So things like that are just a little bit more complicated than they need to be. The positive side, though, is that you get this really clean, uncluttered interior design. It's just simple. I like it for that. You might be thinking, wait a minute, Alcantara on the dash, that's pretty cool. Well, actually, you can't get that on the car. Someone who owns this has actually had it fitted. Normally, you get wood if you have the black interior, black leather interior like this. Then you can have a white interior, and then you have a white strip on the dash. Feels well made and solid. Oh, squidgy up there as well. All good. There's something else that's new. It's a big one, this. A magnet holds this on. Look, so it's not clipped in. It's just like that. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I should talk about this screen, right? Because it is the centerpiece of the interior of this car. Huge big tablet. It's got Google Maps on this one. You control all the features through it. It's good, but it's not brilliant. For starters, your speedo's there because you've got no instruments in front of you for the driver. So you're always looking across like that. I'm not the biggest fan of that. Also, it can be a bit convoluted doing certain things like I've just shown you. But Tesla likes to have a bit of a laugh. So you have toys and games on it, so you can do certain things. One of them is a fart effect. <laughs> Was that you, Lewis? Ooh, <laughs> a bit of follow through that one. And something else that you can get on it is entertainment functions. So you've got Netflix, you've got Twitch, and you've got YouTube. So you can watch a bit of car wow on there if you want to. Overall though, I do like this interior. Seats are nice and comfy. The only real problem, I think, is that this pillar is really, really fat. So you do get a bit of a blind spot when you're at junctions and stuff. Other than that, it's nice here in the front. Let's check out the back seats. That's not the way to do it, Mr. Punch. I just went to open the door by pressing the button for the window. There's the door button there. That's the way to do it. Um, okay, knee room's fine. Headroom. That's actually all right as well. And it's really nice having this glass roof, which is standard. Shame there's this bar here. It'd be good if it was just one long piece, but it is nice. It extends over the back of the passengers as well. There is one problem though. It's the fact that the floor is quite high, seat quite low. So you're almost in like a squatting position. In fact, it's kind of in that position that makes you want to go to the toilet. So if you sit here too long, <laughs> You have to stop a bit more regularly for a comfort break. Other than that though, it's spacious enough, floor's flat, so if you need to carry three people at once, there's plenty of space for everyone's feet. The only thing you can't really do is slide your feet under the chair in front, which is annoying. Let me just check this out. Oh yes, armrest, which is sport by having cup holders which aren't covered, so it's not that comfy to put your arm on it. Well done, Tesla. Another thing that's annoying is this, look. That's as far down as that goes. Rubbish. Please get decent sized door bins, some pockets here. Couple of USB C's there. Anyway, let's go check out the boot of the Tesla Model 3. Open boot. You can fit in six carry on size suitcases. Look, I'll show you this. The load lift isn't very big, so it's quite easy to slide things out, which isn't bad for a saloon. Look at all that. Andrea, loads of room. Very decent sized boot, big opening. If you need to fold down the seat to carry long items, you've got to go back here and you can fold it down. There we go. Now, once you've done that, yes, you can carry longer items, but you're always restricted by this saloon body style. It is easier to load big items into the hatchback Polestar 2. And if you'd like to see my full in-depth video review of that car, put a little link. It should be popping out up there in the top right-hand corner of the screen. There's also one in the description as well. Now, boot, close, will you? Good boot. Right, let's check out the front boot. Being an electric car, you have some more storage here in the front. So, front boot, fruit, gone fruity, open. <laughs> okay, so obedient, this guy. It's really good. Yeah, I mean, Steve, it's being controlled by the owner, Richard Simons, over there on his phone. You can control lots of the car on your phone, even if you're in another country. Clever. Anyway, front boot. It's big enough to hold more than your emergency Tesla kit. You can actually fit another carry-on size piece of luggage in there if you want to. But this is one thing they have changed for this latest version of the Model 3, which isn't for the best. This used to be lined with carpet, stop things sliding around or rattling about. Doesn't have it anymore. There's no hooks to hang your bags off either to stop those sliding around. Why have they done that? Anyway, that brings me on to five annoying things about the new Tesla Model 3. I really like the design of these alloy wheels, but there's something about them that does my head in. On the right-hand side of the car, this blunt part of the design 
is rotating forward. But here, on the left-hand side of the car, the more curved part of the alloy's blade is rotating forwards. Why don't they just design left-hand side wheels and right-hand side wheels? Probably to save money. You know how I said at the beginning of the video, these new headlights have matrix LED technology. Now, Tesla actually hasn't confirmed that, but rumors are that they are actually matrix LED technology. However, Tesla haven't got around to writing software to make them operate and blank out part of their beam so you don't dazzle oncoming drivers yet. Now, they may write that software and do an over-the-air update, or they may not. Who knows? There's no lights around the door handles like you get on a Model S, and now that they've moved them from chrome to black, you just can't see them at night, so you're like stabbing around the door trying to find it in the dark. As standard, the car has an automatic cruise control system, which is a radar to keep you safe distance from the car in front, it'll automatically brake and accelerate, and steer to keep you in lane. The only problem is that when you indicate to actually change lane, it disengages. Also, it's quite weird how it judges whether you're holding the steering wheel. Sometimes it's a bit too sensitive, and if you're not holding it enough, then it'll disengage. And if you're holding it a bit too tightly and put some pressure on the steering wheel, it'll disengage. It's a bit of a faff. You can actually upgrade to full autopilot, which is brilliant. So it'll steer to keep you in lane. It'll even change lanes itself and take you off at a junction. And for that, you're going to have to pay £7,000. It does include the feature of summoning the car, so you can press a button and it'll come to you out of a parking space, or it'll do the reverse, it'll actually park itself in a parking space. But seven grand is quite a lot. And why don't they just sort out the standard fit cruise control so that it was just a little bit easier to use? The last Model 3 I tested had a problem with its Bluetooth, it kept cutting out. And this Model 3 has a problem with its Bluetooth. Its owner, Richard Simons, is connected to me now. Richard, can you tell me about why you think Tesla's are the best electric cars ever. Well, they're generally really good. Tesla, a lot of frustrating. There's new cars. Bluetooth doesn't work. Um, it's not my phone. It's the, the Bluetooth from the car. Right. My yeah. house, so, this is a car from a man who's supposedly sending us all to Mars. But he can't sort Bluetooth out properly. I don't think I want to get on his spaceship just yet. It's not all negative, though. Here's five good things about this car. This car has surround view cameras, which you can use for parking, but they also work as a sentry mode. So they keep an eye on your car when you leave it parked. So if you have someone suspicious kind of mooching around it and looking in, it'll start recording it and it'll save it to a memory stick, which is stored in the glove box. So you have evidence of what's going on. It'll even alert you that someone is being a little bit suspicious around your car. Now you can actually use it as a dash cam when you're driving. So if you're driving around and you have an accident, it will record the incident. Who the heck is that idiot? All versions of the new Tesla Model 3 get Brembo brakes on the front. The Performance also have Brembos on the back. And here at the front, the calipers are four pots and they have a two-piece design for the brakes, so they're lighter than on the standard Tesla Model 3s. The brakes actually are really nice to use. Sometimes on electric cars, brakes can feel a bit grabby and weird, but they're completely natural on this Tesla. If you drive somewhere that's really narrow, where you have to put your mirrors in so you can get through, the car will remember where that location is, so next time you get there, they will automatically go in. Clever. Tesla has fitted this new Model 3 with something called a heat pump. So it doesn't work like a conventional heater, which heats up an element electrically, which uses a lot of energy. Instead, it does something else, which is a little bit like a reverse refrigerator. Not entirely sure on the specifics. If you know, because you're an engineer or something, please let me know in the comments below. Anyway, it means that you can get further on a single charge if you have the heater on. No, you can get further than if you had the old style of heater on. Yes, that makes sense, actually. I really like the Tesla Model 3's little charging port flap. It's nice how it opens. What I like even more, though, is the fact that if you buy a Tesla, you get to use Tesla's supercharger network, and it just makes owning an EV easier than if you don't have access to them, like you don't with other electric cars. Now let's talk about charging and batteries. You can pretty much charge all Tesla Model 3s from almost empty to 80% full in around 30 minutes at a supercharger. In terms of the choices of power output, the entry-level car is a standard range plus. It has a single electric motor driving the rear wheels that has 296 horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque. And you get a range from that car of 278 miles. Then there is the long range version that has dual electric motors. So one at the back, 
one at the front, combined 367 horsepower and 510 newton meters of torque. The range of that car is 360 miles. Then there's this performance model. Once again, motor at the back, motor at the front, but combined, you have 462 horsepower and 639 newton meters of torque. The range of this car is supposed to be 352 miles. But what will they do in reality? Well, do you know what? I've actually taken this car and the entry level Model 3 for a big range test. I drove them until they ran out of battery to see how far they'd really go. Now, if you want to see that video, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way, as soon as that video goes live, you'll be alerted. Don't miss out. Okay, let's see how quick this Model 3 performance is to 60 miles an hour. It's supposed to do it in 3.1 seconds, but I got my specialist timing gear down here. Go okay, see what it does for real. Battery's warmed up. We've got 200 miles range in it. Should be fine. All I have to do is just floor the accelerator. There's no launch mode in the Model 3 like you get in the Model S, the Model X, but I'm going to do it. Here we go. Three, two, one. One handed as well. That's the 60. 3.29. All right, let's see if we can go quicker. Three, two, one. Floor it. That's my launch face. Launch face. 3.29. Yet again. One more time. Launch face. Let me guess. Oh, 3.33 that time. Hmm. Let's try somewhere else. Do you know what? There was some men about earlier. Whoa! There's some men about earlier trying to shoo deer off the track and they're like, no mate, we ain't seen no deer, no deer about today, it's all fine. Wasn't fine. Deer everywhere. No oh deer. I think this can detect animals as well as pedestrians and cars. So I don't want to test it. Now I don't know if you noticed the clunking sound when I accelerated, it's because I've stupidly left something in the boot. So you'll have to bear with me while I just get rid of it. Look, it was this special device for sterilizing cars because of COVID. Who says that I add unnecessary filler to car videos? Right, come on, let's do this again. Oh, friggin' hell. I've got to get my bloody card and tap it here. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, all right. Shut up. Let's go. What? I. Yeah, I know it's departing the lane. I'm driving it, you daft. Bird. It's having a hissy fit because it didn't manage to do 3.1 seconds to 60. Come on, I'm going to give you another go. Right, I'm going to go on this bit of tarmac, see if it's grippier. That's part of my new plan. My other plan is to go into the driving modes. Driving, let's go into. Put it in park. Track mode. Track mode's fine. Oh, I've got to get that back up again. Faffage. Let's go into the customised settings. Let's go into uh, drag setting. This has been set up by myself to give you a little bit of stability assist slip and bits and pieces. Will this help? Let's try it. Three, two, one, launch. Launch uh, face? To get it into drive. Three, two, no, wrong way round. Three, two, one, launch. Launch face. Come on. 3.27, bit better. Let's go. Three, two, one, launch. Launch face. Launch face. I'm not doing this. No. No, I'm not doing it again. We just need one more. I'm not doing it again. I don't care what the producer says. 3.32. No, I'm not getting 3.1, okay? Close, but not quite there. Still blooming quick. Now, I know I always go on about the acceleration in electric cars, but for me, that is one of their main selling points. They're just so much fun in how responsive they are. And in real world driving at legal speeds, the performance is just bonkers, yet really, really useful. So look, for instance, I'm at 40 miles an hour in this. You've got to see these numbers climb on 40, flooring it. Watch this go up to 70. We just the bed. 
real world speeds, overtaking and stuff like that, they are on it. There is no lag, there's no gearbox and engine having to like decide where each other's at before they accelerate. This is where they absolutely destroy internal combustion engine cars, even the high performance ones. My Audi RS6 does not feel as quick as this. It'll be quicker when you're going over 70 miles an hour, but that's only good for the Germans and their autobahns. You don't actually need this performance. The entry level version, I've driven that, just the rear drive version, 0 to 60 in just over five seconds. It's super responsive as well. They're great for everyday driving. Also, these Tezzas, nice and comfortable. The seats are comfy. Quietness, reasonably quiet. So this new Model 3, one of the things they've done is fitted double glazing to the windows, but actually it's not really any quieter than before. Now I know this because the guy who's lent me this car, Richard Simons, he's actually got a YouTube channel where he does lots of things and tests with Tesla and he's back to back with a sound meter on Model 3, new Model 3. Now, if you want to see his kind of techie videos on Teslas, I'll put a link below the video to his YouTube channel, RSEV, so go check that out. Now, there is one thing I've noticed about this car, and I think it's particular to this very car here, is that there's a bit of a wind whistle, like, don't know if you can pick it up on the mic, it comes in at around like, there, yeah, 50, around 40 to 50, and then it stays with you. Can you hear that? I think there must be a seal loose somewhere. And this is a brand new car, so it's not ideal. But other than that, very comfy and relaxing to travel in and near silent, not for the noise. I'm quite impressed. This is the performance, so you get uprated suspension, it's stiffer, but it still goes over bumps well. Not quite as well as the Standard Range Plus with its softer suspension, smaller wheels, because this has got new wheels. They're slightly heavier, apparently, by one kilogram than the old wheels. Now, I think they've done that because the old wheels had a tendency to break easily. <laughs> So they've made them stronger. Now, some people say that that has affected the ride comfort a little bit. So you've got a bit more unsprung mass, one kilo per corner. It makes the car a little bit less comfy, but you're not really going to notice it. One thing that you might notice is that they changed the tyres on the car. So you used to get Michelin Pilot Sport 4 S's. Now you've got Pirelli B0s. And the fact of the matter is, Pirelli's just aren't as good. They don't grip as well. Which is a shame, because it's a really grippy car, actually, this Tesla Model 3 Performance. One of the things that I find makes this car really easy to drive quick on an unfamiliar road is not just the fact that you've got that four-wheel drive traction and that stability, it's the view you get at the windscreen. I mean, look at that. The dash is so low and the screen's so big, you really can see all the road in front of you. It's great, especially when you're down those real narrow tracks and you're hooting it and a car comes the other way and you need to just kind of get out of the way. You really know exactly where the car is. And it also adds to the experience of just being able to see the road ahead of you. I like that. It feels sporty. It's not light, but it's not heavy by electric car standards. It's just over 1800 kilos. And all that weight is low down because of the batteries. It does steer nicely. It does grip. It feels fun. Is it as fun as something like a BMW M3 or something like that? Well, it's close, you know. They've done a great job on it. Yeah, it doesn't look like a performance car. You just would be none the wiser. The acceleration and the handling is really impressive. It's great to drive. I'd love one. The only problem is it'd be hard for me to actually have one because I live in a flat and charging infrastructure, while it's better with Tesla's than any other electric car, it's still just not as easy as filling up with fuel. It's just not. There's one last thing I want to show you. You know, I said this car was a bit like a BMW M in terms of how much fun it is to drive. Well, it has a track mode, which you can now customize and you can alter the split of the power between the front and the back. So I can send it all the way to the back, have the stability off, and it should, in theory, be able to drift. But will it? Let's find out. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> and a Tesla. <laughs> I was not expecting that. It's not quite as easy to modulate the power as it is in a BMW M car. Oh, you can have some fun. Now, if you want to see me doing a similar thing with a good old combustion engine car, then just click on the pop-out banner up there to go to that. You can watch the video. Anyway, enough of that. That's stupid. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Tesla Model 3? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? 
Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should avoid the Tesla Model 3. Actually, I'm just playing silly buggers. You should go right ahead and buy it. It is the best all-round electric car in the world.